today we're going to talk about the interrogation of Sarah Boone. Greg, why don't you tell us about the videos we're going to watch? We'll keep this pretty short. She was arrested in 2020 for this murder. I think she was charged with second degree murder. This is the Orange County Sheriff's Department and there is same two investigators are talking to her. This is a day later than when they went to talk to her on site. So to your recollection, no videos on Sunday? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I mean, I like, I guess <coughs> but I, I maybe it's like a picture of them, the two of Tess and the dogs and George and have them dancing, but I mean, or the, it's just Tess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found. Um, and it was from your phone. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? If you need to move it around, go ahead. <laughs> No, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. Yeah, For everything you've done to me. Your battery's about to die. Shut it down. Oh. Okay. Let me. The battery doesn't last very long. Yeah, it used to last a lot longer than that. I don't know what happened. Okay. Let me just grab something. All right. No, I was just simply asking because um, you had a, a look on your face when she asked you if you've ever done that before. You look kind of shocked and... No. Okay, but why did you say it like that? Like. I don't think you all understand who I am. Where okay. Well, tell me. I mean, I've always been a straight-A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. Okay. I excel at everything. I... I would not do that. You wouldn't lock some, zip somebody in a suitcase? Well, I didn't like completely lock it. I mean, okay. I opened it with one finger. I left enough in there for him to get out. Okay. And I wasn't planning on going upstairs and going to sleep. Okay. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so what should have become an oath moment turns into a whale moment. When you are an interrogator, everything is about control. Everything's about me being in charge of the entire environment, not about going in with a dead battery and, and actually the perp looking over and going, hey, your battery's dying. This is an opportunity to show a video that is very compromising. And what do they do? They come in and bumble that. That's not a good start to an interrogation. She's calm. I, I don't know why she's as calm as she is, but maybe she was just plowed when this thing happened. But there's no planning and prep here. She calmly points that out. Her breathing does increase, and you can see it because we're looking down on top of her. You see her breathing rate increase, and then she loses fluency. And Chase, you'll appreciate this. She says, Ain. just like the guy from Stephen McDaniel video. Ain. So she's lost fluency, and then she goes to a, to a resume statement that is one of the dumbest I've ever heard. I'm a straight-A student. This is a 40-something-year-old woman who zips a guy up in a suitcase, and that's her defense. That's not a good defense. So if I were interrogating her, I'd anchor her admission that she knew it wouldn't be good for him to stay in the suitcase that long and start from there. I would say, why'd you leave the hole, number one? And she'd say, well, I left the hole because he needed some air. Well, then why'd you go upstairs? Because she says, I wouldn't have left him zipped up and gone upstairs. So she's got some cognitive dissonance here just right by saying... Look, I, I left a hole because I knew it was dangerous. I wouldn't have gone upstairs if so. Right there, you got the beginning of the whole problem. If if you're already convinced of her guilt, which you are when you use this process, this is a read style process, ideally. But this is a read style process. You start off convinced of guilt and you're looking for a confession. This is not an intelligence interrogation. They should anchor what she starts off with by saying, I left it open enough that he could get some air and I didn't plan to go upstairs. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so here's a universal in terms of how all of us behave, no matter who you are or who you think you are, is we are all trying to defy gravity in some way. We're all at most points in our life in some kind of battle against gravity, no matter what sex you are, where you were born, who 
nurtured you. We're all trying to work with gravity. In this particular situation, the sticks and rubber bands that are holding her body together are not working at their full capacity. And so we get this convex um, abdomen where gravity has taken hold of her shoulders and it's pulling her down. Now, you could say it's an abdominal retreat and maybe there's some nervousness there. And I think that would be true as well. But as the shoulders are rolled forward and she's so sunk into that chair, I think she's really feeling the pressure of this whole situation and it's dragging her down. Uh, if you want some interesting work on that um, concave abdomen, uh, Cuddy, uh, who's well known in the body language world, did some interesting papers on that abdominal retreat in pubescent females. Very, very interesting how, um, how the, uh, the introduction of estrogen and body image will cause females to become concave there. Anyway, um, I'm with you, Greg. Straight A's, outstanding mother, excel at everything. Well, that's just grandiose at this point. And so, Greg, I think you're right. She doesn't show a lot of nervousness in the way that we'd expect it. She seems quite calm. She's got them kind of messing up clearly right from the get-go. I don't think it's a tactic of theirs to have a dodgy battery at all. I think it's an absolute uh, mistake, uh, but yet she is concave and she's going for these grandiose images as well to prove herself not looking good from the get-go, even with some terrible mistakes going on from the interviewers. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? All right. I'm not going to focus as much on her as I am on the interrogation. This is the worst interrogation I've ever seen in my life. It's not just, it's not bungled and, and nothing went wrong. The whole thing is, this is not an interrogation. It's just some people fussing in a room. That's all it ends up being. After, after she brings up the part about her boyfriend being in a suitcase, in walks that detective with a new cord, went for the computer. After this guy's been talking, the, the other detective has been asking her questions. And while she's answering his question, he gets up and walks over and starts dicking around with a wall plug while she's talking. While she's telling him the answer to the to the question he asked, and then when she finishes her answer, he says, "Okay," and gets up, doesn't look at her, and shuts the door. I, I, I it was I was dumbfounded by that, and you could say this is a technique. This this is some kind of it's not. There's no never seen this before, never heard this, and you'll see it's not a technique because it it doesn't get any better than this. The body language of of disinterest and disrespect is incredible here that they have for for there's no rapport building there's nothing they 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 I, I don't think they know what they're doing and we're going to see that as we go as we go through that maybe maybe they're burnt out but they're disinterested in it it just floored me chase what do you got absolutely agree while this isn't a great interrogation the setup of this interrogation room Oof. is primo. Oof. it's great there's no table between them. There's no one blocking sitting between the suspect and the door. This is the setup uh, that we should have seen, you know, in lots of other videos. Those two rules of thumb should be in every interrogation room. We see it in this one. I just wish the interrogators were there, too. I, too, am a longtime victim of Panasonic Tough Book battery life. <laughs> I can attest uh, they are awful. But there's a lot of stuff there. You also notice that the door is not blocked. You know, there's a clear line to the door. That's a good, important point that I've always heard in training, and I've seen it. I've seen the results in real life. If the interrogators had the ability to spot behavior, they would know that one of her biggest objections to confession would be feeling like she isn't known or appreciated. And what do they do? She's not known. They don't even look at her. They don't build rapport with her. They don't do anything to make exactly what she needs. And not everyone needs to feel known and appreciated. Some people need different things. And we'll get into that uh, in the next couple. That's all I got. Yeah, let me add one thing. I, I taught interrogation and I've seen few that were this bad because at least my students listen to what the person is saying and didn't say, well, well, hold on. Don't tell me that. I want to ask you something else. That's the first step in interrogation. Listen. So to your recollection, no videos on Sunday. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. 
I mean, I like, I guess, <coughs> I, I maybe took a picture of them, the two of Tess and the dogs, and George and had them dancing, but I mean, or the, it's just Tess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I have something that I want to show you that we found, um, and it was from your phone. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? If you need to move it around, go ahead. <laughs> No, I don't remember that. For everything you've done to me. Yeah. For everything you've done to me. Your battery's about to die. Sure, I do. Oh, okay. Let me. The battery doesn't last very long. Yeah, it used to last a lot longer than that. I don't know what happened. Okay. Let me just grab something. All right. I was just simply asking because um, you had a, a look on your face when she asked you if you've ever done that before. You look kind of shocked and. No. Okay, but why did you say it like that? Like. I don't think you all understand who I am. Where okay. Well, tell me. I mean, I've always been a straight A student. I am an outstanding mother to my son. Okay. I excel at everything. I. I would not do that. You wouldn't lock some, zip somebody in a suitcase? Well, I didn't like completely lock it. I mean, okay. I opened it with one finger. I left enough in there for him to get out. Okay. And I wasn't planning on going upstairs and going to sleep. No, it was just the way you said you it. You guys are like, scaring me. Why? Well, we just want you to watch this. This came yes. from your phone. Don't you want to know what's on it? Yes, please. <coughs> Let's see. <coughs> Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. Mm-mm. I don't know how much I can take. I don't know how to find your... <coughs> Do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <coughs> well, it's on your phone. And you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long? Two minutes. No. For everything you've done to me. <coughs> For everything you've done to me. Oh. You, oh. your voice. I'll go first on this one. Uh, Chase, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to to go against you on the setup of the room. I I I think that I think the person you're talking to needs something. They need something to lean on, just a little something, just that corner. I'd put that thing, I'd get them so they're in the corner right there. I wouldn't sit right next to him. The thing that scared me half to death when he stood up and put his gun in her face or put his side over there, all she had to do was reach up there, grab that and pop both of them and she's out. You know, and then go down the hall if she knew how to work her way out of that. That that completely freaked me out when he, when he did that. His gun's right there in her face. It would just be really easy to get a hold of it. And I, I really think people need a, a, a thing to, to protect themselves just a little bit so they can at least get some comfort in there as uh, for themselves so you can help them relax. Because if not, they're going to be all, they don't know where to put their hands and look the way she's sitting. 
she's sitting all, you know, bunched up and, and uncomfortable. And with their personalities, they're not going to be able to get her to, to loosen up a little bit. Just, but it's just, it's, I think it's just a mess. Before they can get the video ready, she starts telling them that she doesn't want to watch it. She gets sick. She has, she hadn't been sleeping. They miss their window here for shock value for this thing completely. There's no way to say, well, really? What's this? You said you didn't have a thing and let's, let's watch this. They don't shut up the whole time. There's not a spot in this entire in, uh, interrogation where they're, where they're quiet in more than 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds tops. You know, she says, I don't know how much I can take. There's the, there's the, the door to go in. Take what, what, you know, what do you know about these? What do you think about these, this video? What, tell me, about, and you just break it up and, and give it to them so they can start talking. And then she's, pretty still while she's watching the video, no emotion, no, oh my God, no nothing, especially if she hasn't seen it before and she's not aware of it. There's no surprise there. There's no shock there. There's no horror there. And she just comes back in her chair and she says, I don't want to watch it, please. And they turn it off for her at that point. And then so far we've seen no structure to an interrogation. There was no, there's, there's, there doesn't seem to be a goal. The, the woman detective talks and then the, the guy detective talks and they're asking two different questions. And just as he finishes a question and, and Sarah starts to answer that woman start, the, the woman starts asking another question. Nobody's in control. Nobody, no, nobody is leading. There's no teamwork here. There's no structure to what's going on. This thing is, is headed right for the squatter. I mean, it, it's in the squatter. There's no, and I don't think there's a way to get it out. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So, uh, Scott, I think you missed out on the shock value of the shirt. That's where they're going for the shock value. <laughs> okay. That's, that's where it is. That's where clearly, you know, this might be your first rodeo on this, Scott. So clearly you haven't seen this technique. Okay. Uh, not yet. But, but he's, he's leaving with that shirt straight down to Bojangles nightclub. That is, that is, <laughs> that is exactly where that shirt fits in. Oh. What is he wearing? What is he wearing? <laughs> Number one, but then he's got the badge there, which, you know, automatically just, you know, he's got the weapon, he's got the badge, he's got this audacious shirt. I mean, there's nothing comfortable about this situation. And look, we're not saying you have to make criminals comfortable, you know, but if, if you want them to open up to you, you have to give them some basic fundamental uh, comfort levels. This isn't doing it. She goes straight into it. She's, she takes that victim stance. You guys are scaring me. I don't know how much I can take. Uh, I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. So she She's, she's taking this opportunity of the stress of this situation to cast herself in the victim. She goes more concave. They're not picking up on any of this because they're dealing with their tech right now. And they haven't, I mean, you know, that, that release of the video should be built up to it seems, I don't know how long they've been there, but in this tape, it seems almost immediately. There you go. There's our ace card. Let's just throw it. Oh, we just screwed it up. Oh, no, never mind. I mean, it's terrible. From the soundtrack in, in, the, um, in the actual tape that they're showing, and uh, you can probably find that on the internet somewhere. It's pretty grim, so I don't suggest you should go and look at it. Uh, but if you want to get a closer uh, listen to that soundtrack... Is she glib in that or is she drunk? What is it about her demeanor there that means she can be so kind of light around around what she's saying? Is it slurred? Is she is she had more than um, half a bottle or a bottle? Uh, not sure. Or is there a glibness to it? Again, this is a question on my part. I don't have an answer to that. But but so far, man, that the fashion is is has done it for me. Uh, Chase, what do you got on this one? I, I don't want to hit too hard on the investigators because many, many times I'm sitting, I'm standing in front of a room with one of those little microphones with 55 detectives, homicide detectives. And I do a show of hands at day one, who's had interrogation training, maybe, <laughs> or maybe four hands go up, maybe. So a lot of times, it would astonish most people how little interrogation training police departments invest in. So here is some interrogation training for you based on this one clip. 
when you hear somebody's objections and initial requests in an interrogation room, objections, initial requests, or in almost any high stress situation, they are using behavioral patterns that work for them in the past. Greg says this all the time. The organism does what makes it successful. We carry a lot more from childhood into adulthood than we really realize. These patterns here are extremely revealing about her psychology and her behavioral patterns. Here's the question you should be asking yourself when you see anything even remotely similar to what you're seeing here. What is being used to escape a stressful situation? In Sarah's case, she's using fear, not injecting it, but talking about being scared. You guys are scaring me. And she's using being overwhelmed. I don't know how much I can take. These two things alone got her out of trouble before, I guarantee it. And if you're the interrogator, you will now know that will be the way that, you know, she used to be to get out of stuff in the extreme. And she's going to do it later if you don't jump on them and use some training to stop those from the beginning, from the beginning of the interrogation or to preempt some of those objections, because that's going to be the barrier to a confession. Greg, what do you got? Yeah, let's talk about interrogation for a minute. When we talk about interrogation, there are really two real schools of thought in today's world. One is read. The read technique goes from the supposition you've done all the work and you know the person's guilty and you're going after information and you use things that we refer to as themes. They were ways of letting a person out and feel OK about telling you that. In the Scharfian version, Hans Scharf, the, the brilliant Luftwaffe interrogator who used non-coercion on Americans, what he did was work your psyche, work your psyche, make you feel better about talking, gain trust, get you to do whatever it took. Either one of these has a certain set of approaches. If you're going from read, you would give them rational outlets for why this happened at this point. That's the way you go. If you're going from sharp, when she brought up those accomplishments in the last video, you'd say, tell me more about that. You must be pretty smart. You start working her ego. You're working her right back into the same place so that when you go to say, look, be rational, and she's told you how brilliant, brilliant she is, you put her at odds with herself. None of that's happening here. And Chase, I agree with you. Few people get good interrogation training. It's the reason we all have jobs. If you watch her when this whole thing starts, she's got a lip compression and internal dialogue. She does this. She's withholding something. We don't know what that is. Could be emotion, could be other information, but she's withholding something as this female detective sets that laptop up. And she goes to internal dialogue. She's thinking to herself something about what's going on. It could be, hey, what the hell are they doing? And she does this when she says, you're scaring me. Well, we associate this with real stress relief because you're massaging those muscles right in that forehead that show concern and grief and all of those things, and they get knotted over time. I would say when she starts working through there and working through this thing, the why question is the most powerful one you can ask. It always works. Children ask it for a reason. When she says, you're scaring me, I'd say, why are we scaring you? Why? Simple question. You get her started in the process of answering. And then she asks the question, is it long? And Scott, when she says, is it long? And I don't know how much I can take. Hold on. I thought you didn't know this video. You tell me how long it is. And you tell me why you can't take it. That's what I want to know. That's all. I'd stop right there. She, that's a source lead. I always tell you guys, when a person brings something up, they're willing to talk about it. If you bring it up, they may not be, but that is a missed opportunity. They don't pay attention to her. They're not listening to her and they're looking to each other. They came in with a plan. And this is the number one problem with interrogators. If I go in a room full of people who think they're good interrogators, most of them will say, I've always won arguments. That's not an interrogator. That's an arguer. That's our knucklehead from the Waukesha parade who is always won by barraging people with BS or some <clears> other way. <throat> good interrogation is not that. I may look stupid just to win in, in a good interrogation. It's all about getting what I need, either confession or information and going after it. So the source leads are powerful. Okay, then this prop thing, no win to say win. Turn that damn thing off and turn and listen to what the source is saying, what the perpetrator is saying. She's moved from internal voice to emotional eye accessing at this point. Her torso, Mark, to your point, is caving in. She's shrinking into that chair. If you turn right now and talk to her and you use the right approaches, the right themes, you're going to get this person to start bleeding information because she's on the verge of going emotional and going into a shell. That's what you're looking for, and that's the beginning of it. You don't have to watch this, if you tell us what happened, was is the answer you should say. I, I agree. Just tell us what happened. We're just trying to get the, the bottom of it, and this is what we can see. And she's almost 
moving into that, what we call a, I'd call a clamshell exoskeleton where her feet are crossed under a chair and her voice is dropping and her body is caving in guys. That's the, and that chin is covering her throat. That's the beginning of pre-confession body language. And we know exactly how to get it to happen. What you don't do is go headlong at her and attack her. What you do is go, okay, tell us exactly what happened. Soften it, get there. And regardless of what space you have, I mean, you both have, we all have opinions about space. It all has to be built around mission. What usually is a doctrinal change from this is you carry no weapon whatsoever in any interrogation room. I'll go back to my seer days when you had a guy named Rocky Gonzalez who struck a guy and he came out flying out of the room. We went and found out what happened. He said, I hit the guy and he turned into Bruce Lee. You never know who's in the room with you. You never know who's in the room with you. So we don't wear any kind of gear that they can get their hands on or any kind of weapons. Bad doctrine. And this is a bad start to an interrogation regardless of what caused it. Just my opinion. Yeah. Now, if you don't know who we are, we're the behavior panel. Now I'm Scott Rouse. I created, <laughs> I created <laughs> the only online true crime uh, course with Greg Hartley. Mark, what, let's do we do that again. <laughs> just just, just do your, don't, don't do the, true crime the script thing. from Star Wars. Okay. You can write that stuff, but you can't say it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, if you don't know who we are, we're the behavior panel. I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst. I created the, uh, God, now my just brain leave is it and go over it. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. <laughs> no, it's just the way you said you it. Guys you guys are like, scaring me. Why? Well, we just want you to watch this. This came yeah. from your phone. Don't you want to know what's on it? Yes, please. <coughs> it's Is it long? Because I don't know how much I can take. Mm -mm. No. I don't know how much I can take. Do I have to watch this? I continuously throw up. I don't sleep. I don't want to see it, if that's okay. <clears throat> well, it's on your phone. And you can either explain it or we take it for what it is. Yeah. We're just trying to give you the opportunity to tell us what's going on. That's it. It's that long? Two minutes. No. For everything you've done to me. <coughs> for everything you've done to me. Oh. You. Oh. Your voice. You have said that you put him in the suitcase. He had two fingers hanging out. And you I flipped him over. I flipped him over, and that's but where it was. I mean, there's two different videos and a still picture where, yeah, it shows you flipping him in different positions, and him saying that he can't breathe, and you saying this is upside down. So in order for him to have gotten into it, it was flipped up. Right. It was flipped up normal. Yes. Like, as if you're packing something. So this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this image is upside down, and then this small video that occurred 11 minutes later, it's flipped over the other way, closer to your dining room table. Okay. Now, he's obviously still in there. So he didn't... How did that... How did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. Well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional, though. No, you told me you went upstairs because what? you were Stop getting here. ready for bed. Stop here. Okay, but here? show me where you can see any fingers coming out. Because there's the end. 
it's and his head's right here. Mm -hmm. So going like this, rather than going all the way up, it's like this. But why is he saying I can't breathe, and why is he pushing on it as if he can't get out? And it doesn't show a hole. You, there's, there's no, no hole. Out. There's no fingers. I don't see his fingers. There's no hole. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't know, like, what you want me to tell you. I'm just showing you, I'm just telling you what we see yeah. and what we've heard from the other I video. I understand. I understand. He's begging to let, for you to let him out. You sound, you're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end it sounds kind of like a, no, it's not malicious. Well, same. It's not malicious. Then just, what is that? What is you mean to you? Well, like if you were to, if I were to tell my Oh, like partner, he does. Like, I get called <coughs> everything but a white woman, so. Okay. I, my intention was not to leave him in there. Please understand that. My intention was not to leave him in there. But you went upstairs thinking yeah. that he could get himself yes. out, but the video shows. That's at what I told point you. I see his fingers. He'll and be up here any minute. And then 30 minutes later, he didn't show. And he's telling and you I he can't wake breathe. Up. He, Do you he's think he's joking? He, you told me he was laughing, and I we were before. The video, there's, there's no. We first laughing. got in there. Oof! Wow, that's yeah. Wow. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, let me give you three poor choices of words. Number one, you're killing me. Look, you're in there for murder. You're killing me is a bad choice of words because it's a tether. I can quickly say. Well, let's talk about you and this. So there's an opportunity. My plan. Okay, you just said, look, this happened by accident. You didn't say accident. But if you're trying to get away with something and say it was an accident, my plan or bad choice of words. Now, whether she's conscious enough to realize that or not, that's why I say I don't think she's conscious of this. I think she doesn't realize what kind of trouble she's in. And she's just feeding into this. She also finishes a thought when the woman brings up, I think it was not malicious, Mm, that sure puts you in a bad place. So poor choice of words from the beginning, and they don't use elicitation there. Well, what do you think killing is? They have a flawed plan because they're not listening. They're there to argue and not interrogate. If you're listening, it would change your path. Look, I, I, I hate beating these guys up because you're right. They don't get enough training. Mm -hmm. I will, Mark, have to add to your comedy for just a minute and say, if you're Chris Noth, you have to wear Chris Noth clothes. <laughs> and if you don't know who Chris Noth is, go look at all the cop shows and he dresses all kinds of wild ways. This guy looks a lot like him, and maybe that's why he's dressing the part. Um, they're here to argue, not interrogate. She leans into the evidence. I love it. She leans over to look at the evidence, and they don't lean on her then. She uses that my plan. That's a push-pull word. Anytime you use something like my plan, I thought there was no plan. Then's when I go, why did you leave a hole? Why would you leave a hole? Because you needed air? Then why would you go upstairs? You can't have both of those. They're not congruent. So you put her at odds with self and then you go back after it. It's not intentional. Not intentional. Sounds like a guilty person saying it was on accident. She's prayerful when she says, what do you want me to do? She does that little chipmunk thing again, or hamster thing. And then she finishes the person's thoughts about malice. That doesn't sound good. These guys could have leaned in there and said, hold on, Sarah. I wasn't going to say malicious. Let's talk about that word. What does that mean to you? That's the way you get a person to start telling you something about what's going on. And then he does get it. He almost gets it. He goes in and he says something to her that causes her to say, like he does me, when he says, what does F you mean? Like he does me, but they miss it again. They push and disparage her instead of going after it. If this is Reed, where's the narrative? If this is Sharp, where's the approach? So we got to have somewhere in there we start to figure this out. If you pay attention when this, there's a really great indicator that I think Reed would be powerful. When this female detective starts to rationalize what happened, watch the body language of her open up. It's powerful. It tells you that she's susceptible. But then she goes right back to the argument and says, but the video shows and you see the body language shift. Really hard for me to watch. Scott, what do you got? I, I think even with training, I think these two are burnt out or just don't want to be there. They're, and we're going to see some examples later on that 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 would prove my, uh, my theory there. I, I don't think I don't think any kind of structure would help them. I think they need to get rid of them and start all over again. He's sitting back in his chair running his own game. He's doing something else. They're asking two different questions almost at the same time. And when she says, I don't know what you want me to tell you, he should have said, one of them should have said, look, I want to tell, tell me why he did this. And just everybody hush. 
and then go on to well, tell me why it's there's no questioning there's no there's nobody in charge there's no no nobody's leading it's just bouncing around the room and then i think this the guy detective is the most uncomfortable interrogator i've ever seen in my life he can't sit still can't keep his fingers out of his nose he can't he can't stop scooching around squishing around he it, it just it looks like something's wrong it looks like he's the guilty one at the, when we're looking at it from from this point of view and when she says my plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep they say but that's what you did <laughs> come on man there's you know a lot even on tv shows they know where to go after that they ever you know but they don't they're not even following their their tv show and, and movie structure there's no structure here whatsoever her body language is pretty much the same as it has been uh, like you were saying, Greg, she's doing the same thing. She's got her, her baseline, her basic setups that she does and uses to get rid of her her stress and, and built up tension and the, the protective things. Every, everything seems the same. But but this interrogation is not an interrogation. It's just a fuss. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, this uh, I agree with you guys. This would have been a great opportunity because in this audio or in this video, there's a thing like it. it she says, you, you choked me. I would be on that and I would say, well, I know you don't want to listen to it. And I'm, I'm sorry. We don't have to do that right now. We're, we're going to have to. But I wanted to ask you about one thing in there it, when it said he was choking you. And that happened to my sister. And it's disgusting. And I wanted to ask you if that is a true statement or you made that up. So now we can get clarity there. And now we're starting to project and and which right after this rationalization we've shown that it's she's susceptible to that boom project i'm gonna leave the rest of it alone this video it, it, if you watch this video again at, which you're going to right after uh, i finish talking here this is as if you interviewed dwight schrute from dunder mifflin that's the character we're seeing across the table there that's all i got right. i want to go Mark. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mark, you can uh, you can have a turn this time. Yeah, let me jump. Let me jump in. Uh, look, uh, look. Here, here would be my structure. Okay, watch and listen. Watch and listen. Watch and listen. And ask questions out of curiosity. And there's this moment right up the front where she retreats right back. It's a big movement from her her baseline of being subdued by gravity. She goes right back and she says. I don't want to watch it, please. I don't want to watch it, please. Well, my question, having seen that and heard what she said, my question out of curiosity would be, what, what most causes you want to not want to watch this? I mean, it's just a curious question. Maybe it'll get me somewhere, maybe it'll get me nowhere, but it isn't arguing with her. And just as everybody else has said, they are just arguing with her. They're literally putting forward what they have as evidence good evidence yeah and then she's responding and then they're arguing with her response and so everyone's getting frustrated as far as i can see everybody's getting frustrated um they talk over each other they all talk over each other she ends up standing up and helping out at that point i would go she's in control now it's like i'm almost on her side going take it take this one why not why not take this one like you've got this one now he's there he's exhaling it's clear indicators of his his frustration or boredom or i think both upset with it the 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 female interviewer is mirroring and escalating her tone so not only is it argumentative but she's taking the same tone as the subject and then they're escalating each other uh, and the male just continues to get kind of irritated and restless and and just as you were saying right up the front scott right here is my last note i've got who is in control here who's in control here like nobody's in control apart from the subject i think who is in the most control there but but then kind of gives it up because i don't think she quite knows how to take control of this moment i would I think I'd have said, well, I, I'll be going now and, um, you know, give me a call when you've sorted out your tech and stuff and you got your, got your shit together. 
<laughs> I'd have been out of that. <laughs> wow, Mark uses Mark, Mark cusses. Wow, wow, that's a, that's a first. It's that bad. It's that two and a half bad. years, and there it is. <laughs> wow, unbelievable, unbelievable. All right, if you don't know who we are, we're the Behavior Panel, and I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. And I created the number one online body language course, Body Language Tactics, with Greg Hartley. Mark. I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language, help people all over the world to stand out, win trust and gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. Hey, I'm Chase Hughes. I did 20 years in the U.S. military, wrote the number one best-selling book on behavior profiling, persuasion and influence. And I change people's lives teaching those things today. Greg. Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor, written 10 books on body language and behavior, and put together that number one body language course at bodylanguagetactics.com with Scott Rouse. Mark said shit. <laughs> yeah, this is some of the worst I've ever seen. You yeah, know what I wonder? What I wonder, do they what? think this video is enough? They don't need her to say anything. I thought about that, too. I well, thought about that too, and I thought maybe they they're bother? going for, exactly what... maybe they're trying to go for the I did it on purpose thing, but they can't because they're they're they they have a goal, but they no. don't know how to get there. No, they, it's, get, it's just a show. They're not. There's not enough conspiracy between them. There's not enough. They're not there's breathing together. They're not. Them. They're not no, a partnership. No, they're just, they're all know, over no. the shop. I mean, if yeah. you and I went, if any of us went, hey, let's go in, but let's really mess this one up. We'd be doing it together. We'd be like, <laughs> exactly. a great performance yeah, yeah. of like, if you're it would be the greatest yeah, ever, yeah. you know, failure of a computer, you know, that yeah. would cause a reaction. Like, this is just a, it's a show. That's yeah, <laughs> they just don't know what, look, I can tell they don't know what they're doing. It's that part's very clear because they don't know anything about the psychology part of it. Any approaches, no structure to the interrogation, no questioning. Last, last time I talked to you, you said that you put him in the suitcase. He had two fingers hanging out. And you I flipped him over. I flipped him over, and that's so, where it was. I mean, there's two different videos and a still picture where, yeah, it shows you flipping him in different positions and him saying that he can't breathe, and you saying... This is upside down. So in order for him to have gotten into it... It was flipped up. Right. It was flipped up normal. Yeah. Like as if you're packing something. So this is upside down. Guys, this is killing me right now. So this image is upside down. And then this small video that occurred 11 minutes later, it's flipped over the other way, closer to your dining room table. Okay. Now he's obviously still in there. So he didn't, how did that, how did it go from the back to the front? I flipped it. Okay. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. <laughs> well, that's what you did. Yeah. But not intentional though. No, you told me you went upstairs because what? you were Stop getting here. ready for bed. Stopped here. Okay, but Where's here? show me where you can see any fingers coming out. Because there's it's, the end. It's And his head's right here. Mm -hmm. So going like this, rather than going all the way up, it's like this. But why is he saying I can't breathe, and why is he pushing on it as if he can't get out? And it doesn't show a hole. You, there's, there's no, no hole. Out. There's no fingers. I don't see his fingers. There's no hole. I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I don't know, like, what you want me to tell you. I'm just mm -hmm. showing you. I'm just telling you what we see mm -hmm. and what we've heard from the other I video. I understand. I understand. He's begging to let for you to let him out. You sound... You're laughing in the beginning, and then in the end, it sounds kind of like a no. It's not malicious. Well, same. It's not malicious. Then what is that? What is you mean to you? Well, like if you were to, if I were to tell my Oh, like he does. Like I get called <laughs> everything but a white woman. So okay. I my intention was not to leave him in there. Please understand that my intention was not to leave him in there. But you went upstairs thinking yeah. that he could get himself yes. out, but the video shows That's at what no I point you. when I see his fingers. And He'll be up here any minute. And then 30 minutes later, he didn't show. And he's telling and you I he can't breathe. Like 
Do you he's think not he's able joking? To get out? He, you told me he was laughing, and I we were before the video. There's there's no. We laughing. first got in there. Both of us were. So how long was he in there for? Like this video is at eleven twelve when it starts. So was he in there for like a long time prior to no. recording this? No. No. So it goes from funny to no longer funny. But and I you're the only one laughing. But I didn't think that he was like panicky. Like I didn't I so pushing up on a suitcase saying Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. George has done that in the past before too, where it's just like he thinks that he's well with me kind of thing, where it's like, I well, don't Well, he's never been locked in a suitcase, that's no. where he couldn't get out, so... It's kind of... I thought it was and the boy you know crawling wolf, crying wolf kind of thing. Okay. And again, my plan... But, but nowhere in there is he laughing, is he joking, he is begging. And you're the only one laughing. Okay. And you're the only one saying derogatory comments. Like, you're mad. No. Please don't... I don't mean to sound negative, and I don't know if I can say this, but, <coughs> like, it's like you guys are kind of trying to, like, feed me, like. No, I'm just trying to show you a video that yeah. you no longer want to watch because you probably don't want to know the outcome of how and what you said. Well, I know what. You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Oh. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. No. Just because I went upstairs and. Just you because you're drunk doesn't you mean that you... times that you were not drunk. You said that you had your wits <coughs> about you. You said he had his wits about you. Mm -hmm. You said that you don't like not having your wits. In my experience, if somebody cannot remember doing something to the extent of making two videos and, a video and taking a photo, they are intoxicated. Okay. I understand where you all are coming from. Well, we're I just get trying it. to make sense of it. We're trying to figure it. out we're what you're saying. We're trying to figure out... Chase, what do you got? This precisely right here is where knowing behavior comes in handy. The interviewers are trying to do their best, I think, uh, but I think they're making what I call the academic folly. They're treating everyone as if they all respond to the exact same thing. And the reason this is so different from other interrogations you've seen is that in many of the other videos, the interrogators needed confessions and admissions to both place the suspect at the scene to begin with and then to get them to admit some form of involvement. We have those two things known. So maybe they had some level of training and they thought that they could kind of skip forward uh, in the process. I'm not sure what was going on. But every point of resistance you are seeing here, every single point could have been prevented by knowing just a tiny bit about behavior uh, profile I put together in the previous video based on a 29-second clip of, of her talking to a police officer. All of that could have been prevented by just knowing that one 29 seconds of time. Greg? Yeah, let me tell you this. I don't think you even need to be that smart to get this one, Chase. I think what has to happen is you just need to listen to what she's saying. And she's feeding you exactly the story. She's spoon feeding them the elements of getting her to talk. Because what she says out loud was, they just don't use it. He's abusive. He's all the time up for fun things. He fakes neediness. It sounds like he got in there voluntarily. Then he, he panicked or fakes panic. And Easily, I would say, did you feel powerful because he'd always been rough with you? Yeah, I did. And then you thought he would be able to escape because you left him a little gap. Yep. And I would give her the point where she said, I went upstairs I and then I went to bed and I didn't think about it. And I would then close the loop and come back and say, if that's the case, why were you so concerned about going upstairs in the beginning? You said it wasn't part of your plan. You can't have it both ways. You didn't leave him an air gap and then go upstairs and that not be part of your plan. You've got an issue here. Now, I could force her into a corner where she has to come out swinging and give me something. I don't think she is smart enough to do that. And I think you could put her at odds with herself. When she's assaulted with that, you're the only one piece. I thought she's going to go back and say, I need a lawyer because she started to back off pretty hard right there. She threw up both hands and said, that's not how it went. I think you guys are trying to feed me. My God, if you've ever been in a place where a person's giving you the information you need to break her, but they don't. The guy steps on her and says, no, he's got a plan and he's going to stick to that plan. In the army, we have goes and no goes at stations, meaning you pass a station. You guys are a no-go. This is a no-go all day, every day. 
Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So look, everybody's confounded. Everybody's irritated. Everybody's confused until the subject uh, says, um, I see where you're coming from. She's a better interviewer than they are. She's like, I see where you're coming from. I get it. I get it. So she started to build the bridge towards them. But what do they do? Well, he says, well, we're just trying to, and then continues, and they both pile on top of that. She accepts. She agrees. I see where you're coming from. I get it. I get it. Well, we're just trying to, and then they pile on instead of what they could do at this point to become maybe a go, which would be to say, thank you. Thanks for that. I'm sorry we've had to argue about this. Let's start again. Start afresh. Clean slate. Take us through it. What happened from the start? It'd be a great time to just reset. Now she's in. Now she's trying to make agreement. I think she's trying to make agreement because it's chaos there and she's under stress and she needs to know somebody's in control. Somebody's calling this one. So she's going to start calling it and creating the the, the concord and the agreement. Uh, Scott, what do you got on this one? The fact that this detective has has his phone out and is texting or returning emails is bananas. I've never seen that before. Never heard of that before. It's cr and the further this interrogation goes, the more it becomes like that meme where that those two women are sitting at a table and there's a cat on the other side and they're yelling at the cat. That's what that reminds. That's what this is starting to remind me of. It's just, there, there's there's no reason for this. This is I keep saying the same thing, but nobody's in charge. Nobody's in control here. She's answering the questions they're asking her. She's answering them. She's told them about 40 times this wasn't an accident. She's saying, yeah, I did it, but it wasn't an accident. And they're not doing anything about it. They're, they're, they, it's oh, okay. Yeah. And it gets back to texting. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'll leave it there. Both of us were. So how long was he in there for? Like, this video is at 11.12 when it starts, so was he in there for, like, a long time prior to no. recording this? No. No. So it goes from funny to no longer funny, but I you're the only one laughing. But I didn't think that he was, like, panicky. Like, I didn't, I... So pushing up on a suitcase saying, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. George has done that in the past before too, where it's just like he thinks that he's woe is me kind of thing, where it's like I don't. Well, he's think. never been locked in a suitcase, but no, he couldn't get out. So it's kind of. I thought it was and the, you boy know the oxygen crawling wolf, thing. crying wolf kind of thing. Okay. And again, my plan. But, that, but nowhere in there is he laughing. Is he joking? He is begging. And you're the only one laughing. Okay. And you're the only one saying derogatory comments. Like you're mad. No. Please don't, I don't mean to sound negative, and I don't know if I can say this, but <clears throat> like, it's like you guys are kind of trying to like feed me. Like, no, I'm just trying to show you a video that yeah. you no longer want to watch because you probably don't want to know the outcome of how and what you said. Well, I know what. You know, you know what's on that video now? No. You remember making that video? No. Oh. Why don't you remember making the video? Probably because we had been drinking. But you weren't drunk. Just because I went upstairs and just you because you're drunk us, doesn't you mean that you times that you were not drunk. You said that you had your wits <coughs> about you. You said he had his wits about you. Mm -hmm. You said that you don't like not having your wits. In my experience, if somebody cannot remember doing something to the extent of making two videos and a video and taking a photo, they are intoxicated. Okay. I understand where you all are coming from. Well, we're I get just it. trying to make sense of it. We're trying I get to figure it. out we're what you're saying. We're trying to figure out. I understand where you all are coming from. Well, we're I get just it. trying to make sense of it. We're trying to figure out what you're saying. We're trying to figure out this video. You explain it to us. We're listening. I <coughs> just did. Like, we were playing, and then, like, I thought it was. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. My plan was not to. He'll be up here any minute. But, but you again, willingly went upstairs and went to sleep. No one forced you to go upstairs and get My pain wasn't bed. also to leave him in the suitcase. So why didn't you take him out? Because I went upstairs and then I fell asleep. But why didn't you consciously think he's asking to come out? He I didn't breathe. do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <clears throat> well, I 
thought by not giving it up all the way, it would be okay. My plan was not to leave him in the And what was your plan? Waiting for him to come upstairs. And then when he did it? I fell asleep. You said you were up there 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, somebody not coming up. I Knowing that you that the last time you saw him was in the suitcase, 30 minutes later, you're like, mm, maybe I should go check on him, maybe I shouldn't? No. When you, that didn't cross your mind because that's it like didn't an, That's like an assumption. Like, that's what you all are thinking. Just We're asking. It's the whole... You tell us. It's the drinking. That's what it is. It's the drinking. I thought it was like, I thought he was okay. Like I didn't. That you he's all. He's telling you he's not. He's telling you, Sarah, I, I can't I, breathe. He's saying your name, and you're like, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Guys, that's how we are with each other. Like he has. Nobody understands our relationship. This, the whole suitcase thing, never happened before. Would you leave someone else in a suitcase? All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah. Uh, so look, her strategy, I think, is that to put forward that it isn't premeditated in any way. And either that's because she understands something of the law and something of 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 um, of what she could get convicted on and what the sentence would be, or she just <laughs> knows that that's a, a, a better idea uh, to say that she's involved, obviously, but 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 it's an accident and there is no forethought around it. Premeditated murder is is obviously as, as pretty much as strong as you can get. Um, so the, but the the male is always showing disagreement, pursed lips, clear pursed lips as well to show disagreement, closed and protective. This is not great body language. I mean, it could be a tactic, but I think by this point we know it's not. It's his demeanor. It's his demeanor within this. He's he's closed. Now, what's 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 this turning into? Well, they're not. They're never entering into her idea. You don't have to agree with the world that she's in, but you've got to accept that that's her world. And accept. And, and if you know she's lying, just accept that world for a bit to get in there with her. Uh, they're trying to undo that world from outside. They're trying to show evidence and go, well, whatever you're, sa you're saying doesn't fit with this outside idea. What I would suggest they should be doing is getting inside the world and dismantling it from within, from a sense of agreement agreement from a sense of accord and just unpicking it from inside rather than outside. So they're being judgmental. They make judgment calls. They're being moral with her. They're kind of going, well, you know, why, why would you do that? You know, well, that's not the right thing to do. Well, that's just judgment and, and morals. And, and also they're attacking the norms of relationship. She puts a norm forward that says, hey, you know, it's kind of a thing you do is to stick somebody in a suitcase and kind of play around with that well look it may not be a norm for me or a norm for you but you've got to get an acceptance of that norm to be able to unpick it from the outside they're arguing the idea it's going it's going nowhere good uh scott what do you got on this one all right he says you explain it to us we're listening and then he looks down at his phone and doesn't pay attention to her anymore and then she's still in protective mode like you're saying she's, she's got her arms really close to her body all that it's it's staying with her baseline of the of the behaviors we've seen up this point and again the guy detective looks like he's the one being questioned he's sitting back in his chair he's got his arms crossed he's moving around he looks nervous he's touching his face everything else he's adapting with his hands everything he looks like he's the one in trouble then out of nowhere she says because when i went upstairs and then i fell asleep his open-handed gesture comes out when hers does out of nowhere and he says nothing and he's just distracting at this point. He's just, I, I don't know what this guy's doing at this point. Then she says, I didn't do it intentionally. Boom, there it is again. We're done. All you got to do is move move forward from that point. Say, okay, well, shoot, let's talk about that. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Then he says, so what do you think is going to happen if you leave someone in a confi confined space like that? He's not even listening. At that point, he's not listening. He's not even looking at her. And, and I don't think he has. I don't think he knows what's going on. And I agree with you, Chase. A lot of te detectives haven't had training, but this is this isn't good because somebody may go to prison that doesn't need to go to prison, 
because these people will get it wrong. They'll push them into it and won't realize they're seeing a false confession. And that this this worries me. This worries me. They need to call somebody and, and get some help down there in Florida quick. Greg, what do you got? Hey, it's Dr. Phil here. Please subscribe to the Behavior Panel. Thanks. <laughs> I, <laughs> got him. It's funny. I, you, you wouldn't have gotten me, but I covered it up when I was reading all this from the statute. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, here you go. Now see if okay. I can go find it. And take me a, a, again a second now. Uh, all right, man, you guys are, got me this good. time. Yeah, so there, there really are. Just hold on. Now you got to wait for me. Sorry. Yeah, we got it. Got all the time in the world. All right, go ahead. Uh, okay, so state courts have ruled that this is murder too, a killing that was the result of ill will, hatred, spider, evil intent, an act of a person that a person of ordinary judgment would know is reasonably certain to kill or cause seriously body injury, bodily injury, or an act showing indifference to human life. Well, it sure feels like they're trying to force her to say, I knew it would kill him and I made a mistake or whatever, because intent is there then. And that's all they have to do. Maybe that's what they're after is an element they're trying to close the loop on. But look, the one thing I firmly disagree is when he says, we're listening. No, you're not listening. He gets right one thing. He does one thing. He mirrors her. And it actually makes sense. She goes, what am I to do? And he's like, eh, you know, that kind of thing. He throws his hands out again. They miss a great lead. There's the word plan. I would lean in and say, Sarah, what was your plan? Was this a way to show him how powerless you feel when he was in that suitcase and something went wrong? Give her the opportunity. Give her the out. Give her a rationalization. Instead, it goes back to one more of this argument and circular logic. She now says her plan was to go upstairs and wait for him. Wait a minute. If we go all the way back to what I told you in the very beginning and we say, I didn't go upstairs intentionally. I left an air gap because I knew he was, it was not safe. Now you're telling me you went upstairs and that wasn't your plan. And you're going to wait for him. Now you just admitted to me that you know you put him in bodily harm and you caused element three of that law. Now you got him. But there's here's the now they allow her to have a chance. She set up the alcohol day one. That's a rescuer. She's been saying I only had one bottle of alcohol between the two of us. And now she's changing that. She does helplessness and she looks at each of them with good intent. She signals the regulators and she says, I thought he was OK. There's a lot of control there. And they go back at her instead of eliciting and challenge her again. If you just would pay a little bit of attention, you you would get somewhere. Instead, this detective, instead of saying, what do you think would happen, forgets everything the woman's saying and jumps right on her and says, would you leave someone else in the suitcase? Altercation again. I think what she's, they're trying to do is push them to that third element. But if you look at every one of these videos we've shown, each of those is a standalone. There's no sequitur between these pieces. If you look at this one, it's an argument. The first one's an argument. The second one's an argument. It's just there's no power to it. That's all I got. Uh, who did I forget? Chase. Chase. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, I'll be quick here. This assault on her character is what's causing this resistance. And you already know that because of the behavior profile. So how would you have used that behavior profile? I'm curious to know what you would have done at home. Let us know in the comments. We'll take a look. So what could have been done here is to demonize or shift the blame to the victim. This sounds horrible. It sounds atrocious, but it's extremely effective in getting guilty people to confess. In many cases, just like this one, thousands of confessions were obtained guilt by guilty people by blaming the victim for the crime initially. And this is called projection in many, many cases. And this is a common tactic that has proven to be extremely effective. If they built a narrative focused on how she tried hard to take care of him, he's been abusive and mean and violent, etc. Then the interrogator shifts to socializing, wherein they would start making it. These are two, her two things, right? 
So then they're going to start making it normal. They'd say something like anybody would have done that. It's totally understandable. People are going to understand this. And that's why I came in here to help you. This would be especially effective just based on her profile that we developed in 29 seconds. So this is a formula for this behavioral type where projection leads the way in the interrogation. So in some interrogations, you want to minimize, then socialize, and then rationalize. This one, you want to project the brain, socialize the actions that the person took, minimize the seriousness, rationalize the motive for taking action, and that would have probably cleaned the table. Even Scott was saying that she's pre-confession. She's kind of just ready the whole time. Get that out there. It looked like that would have been a short discussion, uh, like an un sub 45 minute interrogation. That's all I got. What did I say, Greg? When we were talking, yeah, I said 45 minutes said. tops. Yep. And you said, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. You, you said 45 minutes tops. And I just said, look, this is a falling off a log. Easy when five minutes into it, she's already starting to, to bleed. Yeah. Done. But if it's altered, I agree with you, Chase. That's not in her personality. You can't go headlong at her. Yeah. I understand where you all are coming from. Well, we're I get just trying it. to make sense of it. We're trying to figure it. out. We're what trying you're to saying. figure out this you video. You explain it to us. We're listening. I <coughs> just did. Like we were playing, and then like I thought it was. My plan was not to go upstairs and go to sleep. My plan was not to. He'll be up here any minute. But, but you again. willingly went upstairs and went to sleep. No one forced you to go upstairs and get My plan wasn't bed. also to leave him in the suitcase. So why didn't you take him out? Because I went upstairs and then I fell asleep. But why didn't you consciously think he's asking to come out? He can't I didn't breathe. do it intentionally. What do you think is going to happen if you leave somebody in a confined space like that? <clears throat> well, I thought by not giving it up all the way, it would be okay. My plan was not to leave him in the And what was your plan? Waiting for him to come upstairs. And you then said, when he did it? I fell asleep. You said you were up there 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, somebody not coming up. I Knowing that, you, that the last time you saw him was in the suitcase, 30 minutes later, you're like, mm, maybe I should go check on him, maybe I shouldn't? No. When you, that didn't cross your mind because that's it like didn't an, That's like an assumption. Like, that's what you all are thinking. Just We're asking. It's the whole... You tell us. It's the drinking. That's what it is. It's the drinking. I thought it was, like... I thought he was okay. Like, I didn't... That, you he's all, telling you he's not. He's telling you, Sarah, I, I can't I, breathe. He's saying your name, and you're like, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Guys, that's how we are with each other. Like, he has... Nobody understands our relationship. This, this whole suitcase thing never happened before. Would you leave someone else in a suitcase? I think someone that knows nothing about this or hears just a little bit, like, oh, they were playing around in a suitcase and then, and then watching the video. Would sleep. That's what happened. But you let him out before. I mean, you put him in, so why didn't you take him out? Uh, because I was upstairs and I fell asleep. No, before you went upstairs. You, like, consciously had to walk upstairs. Do you, I mean, you obviously remember going to bed because you were able to give me a time frame on that. Mm -hmm. And you specifically mm -hmm. told me that, that you went I upstairs. My intention <coughs> is not for this to happen. I am sick about it. I've never done anything like this before in the past. I am sick, especially with that. I thought I couldn't sleep last night. I don't well, know. Well, here's the thing. You tell us the last night, you, you vividly remember this when you told us last night that he was laughing, you were laughing, you put him in the suitcase, he has two fingers sticking out, and you go to bed. Now we see something totally different, and it actually shows you upset and, again, using uh, derogatory terms to him when he's begging for his life to get out of that suitcase. So, so what but my thing you is say we're the, assuming, we're not assuming, but we're the telling fingers, you what's on but, there. So it just happened to be that whenever I was videotaping or doing whatever else it was, it just happened to not have that in it. Okay. And you also, in the video, you can't see any holes. There's nowhere in that where the zipper separates and you can see a hole. If there's a hole, he's pushing on it, begging you to get out. We should probably see that 
that that hole. That he eventually would have been able to get out. Huh. Alcohol. Based off what you're telling us, he should have yeah. been able to get out. Okay. But the video shows him attempting to get out, begging to get out, and he can't. So that's that's just what we're trying to figure out. I don't know if maybe you had too much to drink, you zipped it up all the way, and then you know. I did not zip it up all the way. Okay. Well, I did not zip it up all the way. This is horrific, okay? Horrific. It is terrible. Yeah, horrific. I don't think I'll ever be right because of this. Ever be right. Dealing with everything else that I have in my life, personally, mm -hmm. and then this, okay. whom I loved, it was not intentional. I will put my hand on the Bible. It was not intentional. I would not do that to him nor anyone else. But you did. Not intentional. You intentionally went up to bed. <laughs> I didn't intentionally, intentionally go to bed him. because I'm thinking, okay, hold good, he can get out. How did you not intentionally go to bed? You said you went up to upstairs and got into bed. That's intentionally going to bed. Waiting for him. And he doesn't come, but you don't go down to check on him. So I happen to go to sleep. When I say go to sleep, and what do you normally do when you go to bed? What do you normally do when you go to bed? What do you mean? What is a bed for? Going to sleep. Right. So you go to but bed to do what? But obviously you that. Like, I you go to bed to do what? Okay. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yep, so uh, the female interviewer, lint picking. I'm not, not up here, I'm just demonstrating it up here so you can see it. She's doing it on her, on her trousers, her pants. Um, a, a, a clear show of disinterest, which is very similar, Scott, I think, to the, the guy's previous show of disinterest by being into his phone. Again, no good reason for that. No good reason for lint picking, even if you had stuff all over your pants. Don't touch it, it's not important. So, you know, I've even got like tactic question mark because I was bemused by that. I was bemused as to whether they, you know, had a conversation outside. Should we do the lint picking route? Yeah, I'll do the lint, you do the phone thing, I'll do the lint picking and she'll, pro she'll, she'll be done. She'll be done in, in, in 15 minutes if we do that. I, I just can't work out why they're doing it. She goes to uh, victim, um, you know, what with everything that I've had in my life, they don't pick up on that. They don't pick up on that. You know, be, again, listen, watch, listen, watch, be curious. What do you mean by that? Would be a great question. Yeah, simple question. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? What exactly? What have you had in your life that's had the most impact? What are you talking about? You know, because then we, as Chase was saying, we could get into that stuff. Of, well, you know, he was beating me up and okay, we could socialize that and accept that and have have agreement with that. No, none of that going on. Uh, she goes for hand on the Bible, which is always a great indicator that 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 no good is 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 coming of it. And I loved him in uh, in in past. Again, it's a day afterwards. You know, I would expect I love I love him. You know, even of the deceased, I love him. Yeah. Anyway, not good at all. Uh, Greg, what do you think? Yeah, she's congruent in her messaging when she says she'd been drinking and went to sleep. She goes back. Look, if you were paying attention, if you had a plan and you were setting a trap, you go all the way back to that beginning argument. Well, it wasn't in your plan to go upstairs. And why did that happen? Well, I went upstairs and I was waiting for him. We've seen a lot of anomalies, but we don't see any tie back to those interrogation steps. We see a lot of arguing right now. And for that reason, I think this woman sees it as an argument. I don't think she has any idea how, what kind of trouble she's in here because she's arguing openly like you would in school, like you would argue with your friends and try to win. You don't win with an interrogator who knows what they're doing because anything they do that lets you win is about the next step and setting it up. It isn't happening here. She doesn't think she's in that much trouble. Her open posture will tell you that she's doing this. People close up when they think that they're in trouble. They let her talk a minute and she starts to say alcohol and, and then they step on her again. And when that happens, her body language goes to oppositional. She pushes back in the chair, her hands and feet are folded. And then she does that thing about me and her face actually shows some disdain for the interviewer here. It's just powerful when you see that, that powerful look in her face. And then she starts to try to tell you about her life. She's like, 
feel, please feel sorry for me and help me to confess and tell you how this goes. But we don't do that. We just go right back at it again. And there we go. We just, at the end, she's telling you what she believes and you're attacking her logic. Listen to, if you want to believe that, go and listen to what she does. She's in a downward telling tone and the the detective is in an upward lilting voice as she's asking for approval. Really not a good place to be this late in an interrogation. Chase, what do you got? Yep, just kind of copy paste whatever I said on the last video. You got a, a suspect that's desperate for acceptance, approval, yep. and pity, and you're giving them the exact opposite of what they desire. It's a recipe for absolute uh, and rapid failure. Mark? Uh, I'm done. I've been. Oh, yeah. Scott, sorry. All right. All right. Yeah, I agree with you, Chase. It's, it's the same stuff we've seen before. There's there's no reason to keep doing this whatsoever. And what should happen if somebody's monitoring this, they should have stepped in and said, come here a minute, man. Let me talk to you a minute. Well, either one of those and said, come here, let, let's shut this down. This isn't this isn't where you I don't know what you're doing. We're going to get in trouble for this. You know, this this isn't where you're just it's just three people in a room fussing. That's all it is. I'll end mine there. Hmm. Hey, someone that knows nothing about this or hears just a little bit like, oh, they were playing around in a suitcase and then, and then watching and probably that video. Sleep. That's what happened. But you let him out before. I mean, you put him in, so why didn't you take him out? But because I was upstairs and I fell asleep. No, before you went upstairs. You, like, consciously had to walk upstairs. Do you, I mean, you obviously remember going to bed because you were able to give me a time frame on that. Mm -hmm. And you specifically mm -hmm. told me that, that you went I upstairs. Don't... My intention is not for this to happen. I am sick about it. I've never done anything like this before in the past. I am sick, especially with that. I thought I couldn't sleep last night. I don't well, know. Well, here's the thing. You tell us the last night, you, you vividly remember this when you told us last night that he was laughing, you were laughing, you put him in the suitcase, he has two fingers sticking out, and you go to bed. Now we see something totally different, and it actually shows you upset and, again, using uh, derogatory terms to him when he's begging for his life to get out of that suitcase. So, so what but my thing you is say we're assuming, the, we're not assuming, but we're the telling fear, you what's on but, there. So it just happened to be that whenever I was videotaping or doing whatever else it was, it just happened to not have that in it. Okay. And you also, in the video, you can't see any holes. There's nowhere in that where the zipper separates and you can see a hole. If there's a hole, he's pushing on it, begging you to get out. We should probably see that, that, that hole. That he essentially would about. have been able to get out. Huh. Alcohol. Based off what you're telling us, he should yeah. have been able to get out. Okay. But the video shows him attempting to get out, begging to get out, and he can't. So that's, that's just what we're trying to figure out. I don't know if maybe you had too much to drink, you zipped it up all the way, and then, you know... I did not zip it up all the way. Okay, well... I did not zip it up all the way. This is horrific, okay? Horrific. It is terrible. Yeah, horrific. I don't think I'll ever be right because of this. Ever be right. Dealing with everything else that I have in my life, personally, mm -hmm. And then this, okay. whom I loved, it was not intentional. I will put my hand on the Bible. It was not intentional. I would not do that to him nor anyone else. But you did. Not intentional. You intentionally went up to bed. <laughs> I didn't intentionally, intentionally go to him. bed because I'm thinking, okay, hold good, he can get out. How did you not intentionally go to bed? You said you went up to upstairs and got into bed. That's intentionally going to bed. Waiting for him. And he doesn't come, but you don't go down to check on him. So I happen to go to sleep. When I say go to sleep, and what do you normally do when you go to bed? What do you normally do when you go to bed? What do you mean? What is a bed for? Going to sleep. Right. So you go to but bed. But obviously, you can tell too that like I think you go to bed. Also. To do what? Okay. Is that what you all are trying to do to portray We're not trying to do anything. I'm simply asking you to explain to me what happened. Everything was fine and dandy. I don't Everything call it fine and dandy. Was fine and dandy. Explain you all don't. Okay, for for me to tell you this again, 
Mind you, I've been without him for a day now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I don't know what you all want me to tell you because this was not in any way, shape, or form. Hand on the Bible, intentional. Okay. So you just left I him there to teach him. I didn't kill him. You left him there to teach him a lesson? I didn't mean to leave him there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got up and walked away. How is that not intentionally leaving him there? Because I'm looking at the hole knowing that it's a, it's there. He'll get out in no harm. Because you don't. And then he doesn't. But the, then you don't go check on him. You say you're up for 30 minutes and he doesn't come up. You don't go down and check on him? I'm in the bed. You even move and so I mean, off. You move. You admit to moving the suitcase yeah. like over. So you roll it. You roll it over. Like it's not like I didn't want him to be like that. Yeah. Don't. Well, you didn't like want him to be upside down. down. How do you even yeah. get upside down? Right. You guys are killing me right now. I just want you to hear me. That's how he talks to me most of the time. I don't know how, I don't know how you want me to say it. I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> what you would expect to happen to somebody when you leave them in a suitcase. I didn't mean to leave him in there. Okay. Seriously. What one was that? 12? 13. 13. Okay. Okay. Chase, what do you got? In this video, you can see every single stress marker that we've spent all this time identifying and showing you here appearing at the precise moments of having her character attack at the precise moments and just 10 minutes of training uh, in any, even a, even a crappy body language course would have showed them these little stress markers. So these interviewers are doing the best they can probably with the training that they have maybe. And most departments do not invest in interrogation training very well. Uh, yeah. Sarah is driven by how she's perceived by other people, and that's what's being attacked. I'm not suggesting the detectives here should have known that, but it's definitely visible to you now. And there's this, what I teach, there's six essential ways people are driven. We have significance, acceptance, approval, intelligence, pity, and power. And those are the six things that that person desires from other human beings. This is how they need to feel and what they need to get confirmation of in other pe from other people. So Sarah is acceptance and pity right now, but keep in mind, they don't know this. So this is such a crystal clear warning to everyone watching this to pay attention to behavior and communicate with some precision and not treat people as if they're all the same little molecules, like a science experiment, like an academic study would treat human beings. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, if we go back and look at what she said way back when I was a straight A student. Now we're talking 30 years later, 25 years later. That tells you a lot about something about this person. She said, look, I used to be somebody. I've always excelled at everything I've done. I'm a great mother. To your point, Chase, she's screaming out, look, I'm this respectable person who did something stupid. If you can hear that and you can say, hey, everybody makes mistakes. Now you've got a different approach. Here's what's really interesting. Look at these big illustrators. She's wiping things away. Everything was this and everything was that. They don't even notice that. They don't hear it. When she says fine and dandy, they attack the fine and dandy. She's giving them, I, if, if we skip everything else in this video and she goes, everything was fine and dandy, I didn't mean to. The rest of the interrogation that you've made, Miss, just shut up and go and say, what do you mean you didn't mean to? That's the interrogation right there, because that's what you're after is her saying, I did something stupid that a normal human being should know will kill or injure somebody. That's the element of law you're trying to get. And she just told you, I did something stupid. I didn't mean to kill the guy. Uh, Scott, what do you got? Yeah, the, the, he says, I'm simply trying. I'm, I'm simply asking you to explain what happened. Explain to me what happened. And she's done that about 40 times. She keeps saying she's not going to say anything other than that because that's what happened. She keeps telling them what happened over and over and over. But he was on his phone when she was saying all that. And now he's just badgering her. 
So, and like you were saying, you've got those spread out arms. And then the, 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 the woman detective, her phone dings. She's getting texts in there and returning them during this. I, I've never seen anything like this before in my life. I hope I never get in trouble in Orlando or wherever this is because they'll say, <laughs> Don't that's it. That, they'll be like, that's one of those guys from that damn behavior panel thing, and you'll never see me again. If I ever go to Florida and you all never hear from me again, I love you guys. I'll be searching the Everglades for you. <laughs> yeah, it won't be, be search to be doing that. Is that what you all are trying to do to portray We're not trying it? to do anything. I'm simply asking you to explain to me what happened. Everything was fine and dandy. I don't Everything call it fine and dandy. Was fine and dandy. Explain you all don't. Okay, for for me to tell you this again. Mind you, I've been without him for a day now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I don't know what you all want me to tell you because this was not in any way, shape, or form, hand okay. on the Bible, intentional. Okay. So you just left I him there to teach him. I didn't kill him. You left him there to teach him a lesson? I didn't mean to leave him there. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got up and walked away. How is that not intentionally leaving him there? Because I'm looking at the hole knowing that it's, a, it's there. He'll get out no harm. Because you don't. And then he doesn't. But the, then you don't go check on him. You say you're up for 30 minutes and he doesn't come up. You don't go down and check on him? I'm in the bed. You even move. And so I mean, off. You move. You admit to moving the suitcase, like, over. So you roll it. You roll it over. Like, it's not like. I didn't want him to be like that. Don't. You didn't want him to be upside down? How do you even get upside down? Right. You guys are killing me right now. I just want you to hear me. That's how he talks to me most of the time. I don't know how, I don't know how you want me to say it. I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> what you would expect to happen to somebody when you leave them in a suitcase. I didn't mean to leave him in there. Okay. Okay. What's your reasoning for um, not calling 911 sooner? Because I didn't know what to do and how horrific it was. I called Ryan, and like what, five minutes later I called you guys? Not even five minutes. Nonetheless, that I had to like try to, I was trying to do CPR. I was trying to do CPR. I had to get him out and try to do CPR and then call you guys. And it was continually doing CPR with the dispatch on the phone, where he had me count out loud to help me focus on what I was doing. It just, I don't know how, I mean, you, you can sit here all day long and say, I thought he was going to get himself out, but that he didn't and you went upstairs and you stayed there for 30 minutes before you fell asleep. How, but can I say too, like... You chose not to ever at any point during that 30 minutes walk back check down him. and check on him. No, wait one second, because I know like with you all and then like, because <clears throat> you can continually ask me like, time frames, time frames, time frames, where I told you like, I don't bother even looking at the clock most of the time. So it's like a guesstimate. So I, for all I know, I was, maybe it was 10 minutes. Okay. But the point is, you left the living room where he was begging for help and went upstairs. Regardless again, of how long you were there, you left. You say, I, I thought he was the, the boy calling wolf. Again. Okay. okay. So when he asked to be let out, like, what's your reasoning for not letting him out? When I was upstairs? No, when he's asking on the video. He asked multiple times. He asked to be let out. I can't breathe. What, like, why didn't you let him out? Well, number one, I, number one, I had no idea it was going to end like that. Okay. Number one. Okay. Uh, number two, just, you know what? I'll give you five minutes or so in there. That's, they'll give you five minutes or so. Five minutes for what? 
Well, based off the video, one video is at 11.12 and the next one's at 11.23, so you actually gave him at least 11 minutes per video recording. So my, my thing is, when it stopped, he asked multiple times, I mean, why? Why did you not let him out? It's just a simple I, question. To be honest with you, I, I mean... I don't Were you punishing him? No. <laughs> just well, that's what you're saying in the video. Um, this is what you get. This is yep. what you make me feel like. See, and then it's all backfired on me. Like, it's all backfired on me. And I understand the severity of this. I just... You did. It's awful, I know. Okay. It's awful. And I will tell you both this right now, too. I will never drink alcohol again. Okay. Like, I will never drink alcohol again. I don't care what it is in any way, shape, or form. Okay. All right, Chase, what do you got? I'm just going to talk about one thing in here that I don't think y'all will cover, uh, or I hope. One thing that I've seen many times with guilty people who think they're about to get off the hook or think there's a chance is something that I call self-administered punishment. And innocent people don't feel that they need to tell you that they will self-administer some kind of punishment and that they've learned a lesson. And you see that here. I'm never going to do, I'm never going to drink alcohol again for the rest of my life. And then the detective, you know, in the back of her mind, this is not a conscious process. In the back of her mind, she's going, well, if she knows that I've kind of learned a lesson from this, I'll, I'll just head home after this is over with. And another brilliant, brilliant interrogation technique to get a confession is to walk in there with a the paper and say, all I need you to do is handwrite a statement that says you understand that this was bad and you promise that you won't do it again. And the person believes that that might get me out of there, but all it does is get you a step closer to the confession in many cases, and that's a case-by-case -case basis. That's all I got uh, for that one. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, you got there first again, I'm afraid, Chase. Uh, <laughs> I will never drink again. And then it says there, sorry, punishment. <laughs> yep. So uh yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. It's it, it she's she's punishing, she's displaying that she's already punished herself. I'm never going to drink again. We can all go home now, you know, done and dusted. Um and she does that after it's all backfired on me. Now again, like watch and listen, watch and listen and just get curious. It's all backfired on me. How did it how did that start? How did it start backfiring? Take us through that. If if that's your idea that it's backfired on you, take us through that little element of it because there's that that's a great metaphor. It's a great idea that she's put forward there. They're just not listening to the ideas and investigating them. Um, now, body language rise. She's now really locked herself down in part of this. Hands on knees. She's she's locked down. So I think she she believes something is coming i think she believes the end is near but they're not gonna take her there but she's she thinks uh she's a little less optimistic than i think we are around how good this interrogation is greg what do you got on that yeah i'm gonna skip all the body language except for one little piece but she confesses right here to what they need and they just miss it they just miss it and she gets it by saying why didn't you let him out? The single best question I've heard the entire day. And then you get that, I'll give you five minutes or so. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. That right there shows that she is punishing him, that something is going on, that she had some intent. Now, you go back to that law. Look, when she's on trial, and that's going on right about now, they're going to bring all that up. They're going to say, look, I told him I'd give him five minutes or so. And she did kind of a really with her face. If you notice, that's the only piece of body language I would say. That's the beginning of a confession. With a good interrogator, all I do is I go in there and I start asking questions. And I'll say, was that retribution? Did he choke you? You said he choked you. Did you intend to keep him in there five minutes? And then you thought, well, I think I'm just going to go upstairs and let him suffer a little bit longer. And then you passed out. You knew he was suffering. You knew he couldn't get out. But they don't. They just keep pushing instead of listening. And instead of going back to her first thing where it wasn't in my plan, I went upstairs and then I passed out and looping that back after she says I was going to give him five minutes in there. We miss all that. We miss a confession. And she's giving you the elements of it right here. Scott, what do you got? All right. Um, 
So you got everything, you went over everything. I was good. I thought I had a big old uh, thing there. You nailed everything. But let's focus on the guy again just for a second. Let me talk about that guy. Watch his body language. And think about the people you've seen on TV and cartoons when they're in a poker game or something and, they're, and they won and they're pushing all the chips over to him. He's sitting there with his, all scrunched up, doing his hands, looking like that, like he just won a bunch of money or he just won the lottery or something. Again, no teamwork in this. Nobody's listening to anybody. Everybody's on their phones. <laughs> texting back and forth the phones are dinging they're looking at their phones and when the the woman is, is talking to the to uh sarah she asks when she asks her a question she looks down because her phone dings and then she just sits there and flicks on her phone for a while even while she's i don't think she's even listening to her they can't be listening because this woman did everything she could do to, to give them all the information she could possibly give them and they haven't heard a bit of it. And you'll notice it's the same thing over and over and over like I've been doing, because that's what's going on in here. And I feel sorry for that. I feel sorry for her. I feel sorry for these two detectives because it's, it, this is embarrassing. This is bad. What's your reasoning for um, not calling 911 sooner? Because I didn't know what to do and how horrific it was. I called Ryan and like what, five minutes later I called you guys? Not even five minutes. Nonetheless, that I had to, like, try to, I was trying to do CPR. I was trying to do CPR. I had to get him out and try to do CPR and then call you guys. And then was continually doing <laughs> CPR with the dispatch on the phone where he had me count out loud to help me focus on what I was doing. It just, I don't know how, I mean, you, you can sit here all day long and say, I thought he was going to get himself out, but that he didn't, and you went upstairs, and you stayed there for 30 minutes before you fell asleep. How, but can I say, too, like, you chose not to ever at any point during that 30 minutes walk back okay. down and check on him. No, wait one second. Because I know, like, with you all, and then, like, because <clears throat> you can continually ask me, like, time frames, time frames, time frames, where I told you, like, I don't bother even looking at the clock most of the time. So it's, like, a guesstimate. So I, for all I know, I was, maybe it was 10 minutes. Okay. But the point is, you left the living room where he was begging for help and went upstairs. Regardless but again, of how long you were there, you left. You say, I, I thought he was the boy calling wolf. Again. Okay. So when he asked to be let out, like, what's your reasoning for not letting him out? When I was upstairs? No, when he's asking on the video. He asked multiple times. He asked to be let out. I can't breathe. What? Like, why didn't you let him out? Well, number one, I, uh, number one, I had no idea it was going to end like that. Okay. Number one. Okay. Uh, number two, just, you know what? I'll give you five minutes or so in there. That's, they'll give you five minutes or so. Five minutes for what? Well, based off the video, one video is at 11.12 and the next one's at 11.23, so you actually gave him at least 11 minutes per video recording. So my, my thing is, when it stopped, he asked multiple times, I mean, why? Why did you not let him out? It's just a simple I, question. To be honest with you, I, I mean, I don't Were you know. punishing him? No. <laughs> Just well, that's what you're saying in the video. Um, this is what you get. This is oh. what you make me feel like. See, and then it's all backfired on me. Like, it's all backfired on me. And I understand the severity of this. I just... You did. It's awful, I know. Okay. It's awful. And I will tell you both this right now, too. I will never drink alcohol again. Okay. Like, I will never drink alcohol again. I don't care what it is in any way, shape, or form. All right, well, let's throw it around the room one time and talk about what we think we've seen. Mark, why don't you go first? Yeah, look, just you don't need to argue. Don't argue. Watch, listen, be curious. Don't argue. Chase, what do you think? Yep. With uh, zero training and interrogation, zero, and just three minutes of training in understanding behavior and who you're speaking to, who that person is, this would have been a dramatically different interrogation. And I think they would have been successful without any interrogation training, just a tiny, tiny bit of behavior training. 
different outcome. Greg? I'll take it a step further. If you take the words of Don Landrum, one of my mentors, you got one mouth and two ears, shut up and listen, you would get a lot more. The word patterns that this person used along the way would tell you that they're trying to give you information. I think that she has no idea how much trouble she's in. She ends up getting arrested and is on trial. I think she has no idea how much trouble she's in and she is bleeding information. I don't know that I would think that this was intentional. It looks like something gone wrong. Not gonna weigh in on that, not my, my job but she bleeds so much information that the right touch point, the right listen, the right process, interrogation approaches or narrative would have gotten her to give you the right words. Scott. I think I could take my mother and the woman that cuts her hair and sit them down for about four minutes and say, do this, 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 and this, and they would have done so much better than these two. I think they would have walked out there with confession first, uh, what they needed, right out of the gate. I think it would have been over in about 15, 20 minutes, and that'd have been it. All right, I think this is another good one. And that'd us. have been a good haircut as well. That's true too, that's true, <laughs> that's true too. All right, I think this is another good one, and I'll see you next time. See ya, see you. The behavior panel. <laughs> All right. I hate how Go bad on. we had to abuse these guys, but oh, damn, Oh man, me too, awful. me too. Uh, but you know what? It maybe I'll get back to them and maybe they'll do something about that because they're going to put somebody in prison who doesn't need to be in prison. Yeah, they're going to pull I me think. over when I'm driving down I-4 yeah, yeah. to about I'm, 80 I'm, uh, yeah, besides I'm us my trip to Disney. <laughs> I'm serious. They're not going to see a false confession. Or, uh, they're no, not they, no see... they can't. Well, they're, they're going to talk and not listen. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you got?